Okay. All right, so some folks are getting in by having to call on their cell phone. Um, and I'm still getting occasionally somebody that can't hear, but we're going to go ahead because most of you have indicated that you can hear because we do only have an hour for today's session. So I am Cami Nairn. I am the Nisus Education Product Consultant um, at DPI. I've been there about five years. And I manage uh, Learning.com and our Nisus system, our North Carolina Educator Effectiveness System. Uh, Kim Simmons joins me on these calls. And Kim, are you here? I don't think she's made it yet, but she usually helps monitor those questions. So bear with me as we go through today and you have questions. Please put those in the, either the Q&A or the chat, and I'll check those as I can and get those answered for you. Um, so some of our webinar norms is please minimize your outside distractions. Please do participate as we go through. Um, you can raise your hand. I'll try to monitor those, uh, but we will need to move along in our webinar session, and um, we will try to get to you as quick as we can. And uh, yeah, use that Q&A on your dashboard to ask questions, and then use the chat to pick up any links that I post out there. However, today, if you can get to the chat quicker, we'll work with the questions in chat as well. We will um, follow up this session with an email, and it is being recorded today, so it will include a link of the recording within 24 to 48 hours after the end of the webinar. Uh, we'll include the link to our feedback survey that will be on the last slide today. You will get your certificate of completion when you complete the feedback survey. So if you complete it today, that's fine. You'll get an email. Um, they say usually within the 5 to 15 minutes, you should get an email back with a link to your certificate, or it will be attached in your email. And then um, we're going to include the links to any resources we discussed today and then answers to any questions. I usually try to do a frequently asked questions document and include that in that email. So again, to welcome to our new users. Um, if you've never been in ESIS, this is the basic session today. So we'll try to go slow, but also quickly, because we don't have to cover our users at all levels, our basic users, our teachers, our, our support staff, and then to our principals and district administrators that are helping to manage the NESIS system. So we're going to learn how you get in NESIS, and then what kind of access rights could you have in NESIS, and then how to, how to actually log into NESIS. And then we'll um, probably walk over to the live site and navigate through what's, what you see on the banner and on the tab. And then we have some resource slides, and we'll have time for questions at the end. We will take questions throughout, so I will try to stop and check for those. Let me check the chat real quick. Good. Thank you, guys, for those that you can tell me I, that you can hear. We still have some that can't. I think it's their settings. Okay, so the how and why of NISIS account. Uh, we have to look at our staff source files. So we have two components that make up NISIS, and most of you are aware that the main reason for NISIS, our North Carolina Educator Effectiveness System, is where your evaluations are housed, and that's in our component one. Also in um, the component one uh, is your professional development plan where you do your self-assessment and you set your goals. So your evaluations, you work with those observations throughout the year, the PDP plans, you're going to work on your goals and do your self-evaluations there. And then component two is the professional development side of the system. Uh, everybody can take courses that DPI has published out there. We have a catalog of courses out there. And if your district, your local PSU, has opted into our home-based suite of products, PowerSchool, SchoolNet, NESIS, et cetera, you are um, eligible to get a local PD office, and your PD leads can use that PD office to offer courses, PLC sessions, anything that earns a credit for who is ever taking the opportunity. Um, that can go in that PD office, and then 
end up on every on the staff that took the opportunity on their um, staff transcript. So how do you get in NESIS? We have a nightly user account feed. It's called our TNL True North Logic Person and Profile. This system began as True North Logic and it went underwent several name changes the last two or three years. So if anybody is on here to has been with us that long. Um, we are now known as Power Schools Perform Enterprise and Professional Learning. But we are going to call it NESIS. That's that's our local DPI brand, our North Carolina Educator Effectiveness System. But every night a file runs with our person import, our people import, and we're going to show you where that data comes from and then how the system knows whether you're active or inactive in NESIS. So here's a, a just a quick look, and we go through this in details in some of our other webinars with our administrators. So we're just going to go quickly over it because I want you guys to get in and navigate the system. So we start pulling data from your schools around 4 p.m., and it pulls from staff UID, which is actually, if you look on the right, coming from your payroll system. They do an export of the list that you see there, your names, your active status, what object pay code do you have, and where are you located. And that is then uploaded to our staff UID system. Your payroll systems may call it CEDARS. Uh, they upload it there, and then together with PowerSchool gives us your email if you're in PowerSchool, um, the HR uh, in your district gives us some additional data. So if you're not in PowerSchool, we get the email from HR, and we get primary locations from there, and then teacher classification codes, are you a beginning teacher, things like that, will come in through HR, and then from licensure, we get your license expiration date. And all that calculates and feeds together into our big operational data store and then into our nightly file. So what's coming in? We're looking for those um, object and purpose codes to define what roles are in NESIS. So if you look here, if you are a teacher in a classroom, and let me see if I can get my pointer. If you are a teacher in a classroom, your budget code is most likely 121. Unless you have some other teacher specialties here, you may have a different code. But just having a budget code of 121 will get you into NESIS. And notice that almost all the roles that come into NESIS are certified, certified staff. We only have one classified that comes in, and that is an administrative specialist. We have your lead principals that come in, and they are coded 114. I'm pointing them out because we'll talk about that in a minute. We do have some other principal roles, and those are your assistant principals and your other assistant principals. And there's your superintendents. And here are, are down below, most of our um, support staff, you're going to come in with an object code and a purpose code to define your role. So let's look at those user access rights. Um, everybody comes in as a user. We have somebody that comes in as a site administrator. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then we have a district administrator. So the very beginning, Everybody, almost everybody, except for one role, comes in as a user access. So what does that mean? It means I see me, myself, and I when I am in, in NESIS. That is all I see, only my assigned plans and only my data. And you're going to have access to the tabs that you see on the screen, seven tabs, home, my evaluation, staff evaluation, help guides, professional development, my courses, Transfer Credit Manager, and the mobile app. I'm going to pause just one second and check our chat. We will have this recorded for those of you that can't hear, so I'm hoping it's recording the sound okay. Let me check Q&A real quick. I don't see any, any questions coming in yet. So that is the user access level. Um, you do have the staff evaluation, but you won't see anything there unless you've been assigned some access rights, like mentor or peer or evaluator, things like that. 
you won't see any uh, thing under staff evaluations until that's been done. All NISA's roles are user access, unless you are that principal, that code 114. Principals come in as site administrators, and that's only the head principal. Assistant principals, you are still users in the system, unless somebody decides to give you additional rights. So the site administrator, the 114s, you're going to get access to 11 tabs. You're going to get home, my evaluation, staff evaluation, help guides, professional development, my courses, transfer credit manager, the mobile app, and you get system administration, my staff, and reporting. So the site administrator, if they have a code of 114, are automatically assigned in the system to be the evaluator of everybody in their location. So nobody has to set their rights, they're already the evaluator. So they have the ability to edit their PDP plan types and their teacher plan types. In other words, they can set your plan type to whatever it needs to be to show up for you to start. So they're the ones that usually do it. They may have some helpers. And they also can assign access rights. And that's the evaluator rights, the observer, peer, mentors, the ability for people to reopen activities in your plan that have been closed. And um, they can assign, um, like, superintendent of you only access to a plan. They can also manage adding calendar events in the system or targeted emails and announcements for their location. And then the top role in the system for the PSUs is a district administrator, and we call them our reopeners and reporters because they have those same access to those same 11 tabs, but they have some additional rights. They can see all the plan and user data at their entire district. They have a place that they can go to in system administrator called user account. They can see everybody there. They have the ability to archive and delete plans from there. And they also have an ability to assume identity of users. So if you're having an issue in your system uh, and you've brought it to your principal, he can then bring it to this district administrator uh, that's been assigned in NESIS, and they can assume the identity of you and see what you see to help you figure out what step are you missing or is there an, actually an issue in the system that needs to be reported to DPI. They also can set those plan access rights, and they have that ability to unlock and reopen any activity that has been marked complete. They can make other users. I have to set the very first person who is your district administrator. But once I've done that, and you can request that if you're brand new here, um, if there's a lead listing, they can request that by opening a ticket with DPI. It comes to me, and I can give you that first district administrator right. From then on, that district administrator assigns other district administrators or other site administrators. They can search in that user account that I mentioned a while ago. We'll go take a look at all this in just a minute. And then they also have access to staff and course dashboards, which is other areas where you can get reports and see how the staff are doing. And then they can also create staff groups. Maybe you want a staff group for beginning teachers, or maybe you need a staff group for your residency license teachers. Any kind of staff group that you want to create, the district administrator can do that in the system. And I believe the site administrator can do that as well. And then they also can manage the calendar events or target announcements in NESIS. So how do you access NESIS? Well, if y'all were trying to access it Monday, this was where you went and it wasn't working Monday morning. Um, it was working early and then it kind of broke because we had so many folks getting in. They have now increased the ability for staff to get in. And so I haven't heard of any issues today. Um, but what you do is go to this my.ncedcloud.org site and you'll see rapid identity. You'll see NCEdCloud IAM. 
This is where you log in. You leave it on NCA Cloud, and you put in your 10-digit UID number, and you click Go. And then you're going to put in your password and click Go. And once the dashboard loads up, you're going to look for the blue cyan P that has unified talent written underneath it. Underneath it. That's another name we've had. And Nisus underneath it. So that's what you're going to click to get into Nisus. If you're brand new and you've never ever logged in here before, uh, you may need to claim your account once it's um, available for you to claim. So check with your district if you're having an issue claiming an account. Let me stop and see if we have any questions. All right. Okay. So let's navigate. I'm going to go through a couple slides and then we'll go over to our live side. So let's look at the banner first. So the banner is the blue bar that you see at the top of the screen. And you'll see our home base logo, the North Carolina Educator Effectiveness System. And then going across, sometimes you're going to see a star here, um, but that is not always there. That is a vendor notice. And usually when they put those there, what you first do when you log in is a message pops up, a pendo notice pops up with a vendor message. So some of you may have seen one about some upcoming maintenance that's going to happen um, or some upcoming uh, implementation of features. Uh, they will put that out there. It'll pop up. There'll be a star you can click on to read about it later once you close out that message. And then going across, let me get out of here um, and get to, I can get to it. I have a lot of work going on here. Sorry about that. There we go. All right, so this is Nisus. And here's the bar we're talking about. I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit. Do notice that if you zoom in too far, you start losing things. So if you ever come in here and say, what happened to my black bar? I can't get to any of my links. It's because you're zoomed in too far. So just zoom back out, and you'll start seeing items again. And then if you're an administrator and you've had, got a lot of assigned access rights, some of this stuff on the black bar is going to start to roll off and go under this arrow. But right now, let's look at this blue bar. And there's that star. You can click on it and see what's coming soon. So uh, we've got something going on this Sunday. that will be an update to the Professional Learning and Perform Enterprise. The envelope is your messages. So you can click on that. Oh, oh my goodness. Try again. All right, it says I'm timed out. They have timed me out. Let's try again. There we go. There we go. Um, there's your messages. If you have any messages out here, um, it, right here it'll tell you that they're unread. Here's the message that I've already read. I can view all. And if you're in your system, you can follow along. That's fine. Um, so some of you may have a red circle with a number on it. It means you've not read your messages. So click in there to see what's unread. And here's the message I sent out about our webinar schedule this year. So you can delete the message once you've read it. You can scroll through messages if you have more than one out here with the arrows. Okay. The next icon over is your calendar. And it'll pop up a little window and show you the calendar of what's upcoming. Um, I have not posted all the webinars out here yet. Some of your districts may be using this as well to put dates in as to when you need to have your orientation done, when that first observation is due, things like that. So some of the districts do utilize this calendar. We do understand if you have a local calendar that you're already using, 
Um, you may not have need of the calendar in Mises, but there are some that do use this. So do watch out for those red circles on your envelope. Uh, just to let you know real quick that this envelope, these messages, also now show up on your My Evaluation tab, and we'll see that in a minute. The next icon over is a question mark in a circle, and this is the Power Schools Help area. So they don't have like help guides, but they have help pages. So you can come out here and search for information. Um, it's going to be based on the basics of NISIS as far as um, what they do. So maybe you want to learn about professional learning. And then it's going to return everything that has the word professional in it, professional and professional learning in it. And you can go through the list and see what you want to read about. Uh, maybe you're creating courses for your district. There's all the directions, and they have good screenshots. Notice that you can't really get back. So what it did was open in a new tab. So you can just come back to the previous tab. And there you are back in the system. And the last thing up here, it used to be a name up here, but they changed that toward the end of last year to our initials. So you can click on your initials, and there's a logout area, and there's a manage profile. So we'll look at mine, but I want to go back to the slides because I have some screenshots I want to show you of this. So in here is your account. Um, I've never tried changing my picture. I don't know if that works. So if I want to try it, that's up to you. Um, up here, you're going to see how you get in. I don't have a UID at DPI. We log in differently. Um, your email should be coming in. Your staff position should be out here. You're going to see some demographics, and we'll look at that on the slides. And then your location will be out here. There's no need to do passwords out here because your password is what you use in NCA Cloud. And this password has nothing to do with that. This was from previous, before we started using single sign-on. All right, and then you won't see buttons to change your location. The other thing you will see is a snapshot tab. And you can come out here. Maybe I have some things out here you can see. If you've taken professional development, it will show you totals out here. So it says I've got 8.8 .8 CEUs. And then it shows me how they're divided up and what, what credit type they're applied to. Over on the right, it tells me how many times I've logged in between certain dates. So this is for last year, August 18th to August 18th, 2020. I can change the range here. So for the last six months. I've been in the system 846 times. You can even go longer, up to five years. Okay, and then down below, I don't get an assessment, so we're going to go back to the slides and look at those. Yeah. Looks like my little slide that I had to show you, the little dots, is missing. Um, let me try one thing real quick for you. It won't let me show it. Okay. I'll get that added to the slide, but I wanted to see when you go under um, that last little area and scroll down, you can see your ratings, and it will give you a graph of ratings year by year. If you've been in the same location, it will graph it out so you can see how you've rated in your summary evaluation year by year, 
or for just for the last two years, you can go under there and see that. So I apologize that that slide seems to be hidden. So let me we'll move on from there. So the next um, place we wanted to go was to the tab. So when you first log into Nesis, you're going to see the Home tab. And on the Home tab is going to be your welcome messages and any other information that I post out there that I think is relevant for you to see. Uh, any any upcoming PD maybe or things that DPI is doing, that will go in that welcome area. There's the NCDPI support section and it just gives you how do I tell somebody about the issues. And then we'll have the webinar showcase. This is where I post our recorded webinars. And it will show any upcoming events on the calendar. Let's go take a look at that. So here's my home page. And again, depending on how far you're scrolling in, is depending on how your channels show up. So here's the welcome messages. District administrators, you're also going to see this DA dispatch, and we'll get this updated soon for this year. But here's all the messages I put out there for last year. There's the upcoming events. If you've been assigned to teach a course by your PD office, you're going to see the Administer My Courses link, and it's going to take you to your office if you click that link. Here's that NCDPI support. And only customers that are designated in your, in your PC, PSU can open tickets with DPI. So follow that protocol. And then here's where we're going to start posting this year's webinars as well. These are last year's webinars. They're good to watch if you'd like to go ahead and watch those before I move them. Everybody then sees the My Evaluation tab. I'm going to stop real quick and look at the questions. See if we have any. And let me look at chat. All right. All right, so I have a couple of questions that people can't see anything but two participants and yourself. Are you guys seeing my screen? Do you mind putting in the chat? If you can see my screen and we're on the evaluation page. Okay, good. Hey, Kim. <laughs> Glad to see you. Okay, so Kim's here. All right, great. Thank you, guys. All right. So, Kim, I'm going to let you manage, monitor our chat. Did you want to say hi real quick? All right. I think we're good. All right. So, here is where you're going to find your evaluation. And if you've been assigned an evaluation, it's going to be under your current evaluations tab. Um, you'll have a blue start new button if it's there, and you can do that. I want you to notice, since this is learning how to navigate in NESIS, um, you have a couple other tabs that kind of get overlooked out here. There's an archived evaluation. So if you've completed an evaluation and you're still in the same location, every year at the end of the year we archive your evaluation, and then this is where you see it as long as you remain in the same district. If you leave your district, the system is designed so once you're inactivated in that UID that we talked about earlier, your your plan deactivates, you will still have access to it, but it will not be under archived. It will be under deactivated. So look for your plans there if you've changed districts and need to print them out. Also on this page is those announcements that are under the envelope also show here. And then just a little bit about the different plan types that we have in the system over here. So you have the different uh, standard comprehensive abbreviated and like our plan types. Um, the only group that gets those abbreviated are your teachers. Everybody else gets standard abbreviated or at the discretion of a district, a late hire plan. And then the PDP types are assigned individual monitored or directed. And of course we have our administrator plans, principal or assistant principal. And then I put a few help guides out here for you brand new folks, um, how to start your plan, how to complete that self-assessment, 
and how to complete that training and orientation. So any questions about on your my evaluation page? Cammy, can you hear me? Yes. We do have a we have a question. Where okay. do I sign in to put my orientation day? Okay, so let me go grab a user that I can show you. And we'll take a look at that. All right, so let's use try this one. All right, so this user is going to go to their My Evaluation. All right, and they have several because these are test users that we test over the summer. I'm going to look at a comprehensive plan. And this has already been clicked into, but this is where you need to go. So you've clicked into your plan. Uh, it opens to all the activities. Uh, here is the training and orientation that you need to put your dates in. I'll click through to that. And when you're in here, um, you're going to click Edit. You're going to enter the date that you received orientation. So notice that you can pick a date, any date here, that, that fits. So put the correct date in there. It doesn't automatically say, oh, you can only put today's date in. You can go pick the date that it actually happened. Uh, the rest of this should populate. And you, then you're going to click Save and Exit. Before we go, notice that you do have a link up here for your evaluation rubrics and your teacher evaluation policy. So the principal probably supplied those to you, but they're also here in the training and orientation area. And click Save and Exit. And then I think you have to mark Complete. And then it will take you back. Okay. All right, any other questions, Kim? Not at this time. Okay. I'm trying to find one. I might get a different user and see if we can find one that hasn't started something. There is a little um, icon I want to show you. Sometimes it's a little slow searching. And this is the page that the district administrator sees. This is your user accounts page. Let me try this one. Okay, I think one of these might work. Try the standard. Excuse me. Yeah. All right, so this is what it looks like if you've not started it. There's the edit. I'll put in a date. Click Save and Exit. Mark it complete. And it takes you back. Uh, what I wanted to show you while I'm out here is when you click in here, um, there are these little circles with the eyes in them. You cannot get to these activities until you complete whatever this little eye says you need to complete. So if you hover over it, it says this is not available until you complete the pre-observation conference. So this will not open up until this is marked with a green check. Excuse me, I'm going to drink of water. Okay. And I did want to also show you this envelope icon. So you have the ability, and anybody that has access to this plan has the ability to email people that also have access to this plan. So you can just check who you want to send an email to. You can change the subject. It's got some little script in here to pull, put your name in and put where you're emailing from. But you can change that, and you can change the text. And then you just click Send Email. All right, so our next tab over is staff evaluations. And 
Here, oh, this is a good one. So this person only has access to one plan. It's probably they're being assigned to be a peer on the comprehensive plan. So they can only, now they're only going to see that one plan. They see no other plan. This goes back to this person is a user and they only see me, myself, and I unless they've been given other access rights. Uh, out here also, under these three uh, lines, if you have access to a past year plan, they'll show up under here. If you have access to a lot of people, you can search for their name if you want to click in here. When you're in here, if you're a peer, click on the name to open the plan. If you click on the plan, you're going to get a list of names. You can also see what status this plan is in. This one has been completed, so you just need to scroll. If you need to use filters, district and site administrators, you can add any of those. I'm looking for a certain plan type, and you click Update Table. Uh, also for the administrators, you can download a report here. But we won't get into that today. That's a different webinar. <coughs> I'm sorry, it tickled my throat. Okay, any questions about staff evaluations? This is where you go to see the evaluations you have access to. Oh, this is good. Um, this right here allows you to check the box and send a message to somebody. Uh, you can message everybody on here by not checking any boxes by clicking message all. If you're a district administrator, you're going to see an area here to archive plans or delete. Delete is a soft delete. It goes into deactivated status. And then if you're also an administrator or teacher, you can make a pinned list. So anybody you click uh, a pin on then shows up under this show my list button. So this is not going to be a good example because there's only one for me to pin. You can only make one list at a time. All right, so I'm going to go back and show all again since I took my pen off. All right. Oh, so I already quoted to this about. Um, help guides are right here. We've updated this page. I did hear from folks today that there's an issue with the link, so I'll be looking at this tonight. Um, but you should be able to come in here, click on a guide, and it will open up for you. All right, got a computer phone. <laughs> All right, so this is where you have your comprehensive guide, your standard guide. Um, there's the guide for the teacher and the guide for the evaluator. And then district administrators, how to assign access rights to principal plans, how to assume identity. District and site administrators, how to assign access rights to teacher plans, and some additional plans there. So we are updating these to be 2020 plans. Uh, and 2020 guides, so do watch for those, but these are still good guides. Go ahead and use these. And then over here is your professional development. This is what I call my search area for professional development. So here you're going to search, and then once you've found a course and signed up for it, it's going to show up under your My Courses, your Manage area, your My Courses. So in professional development, you hover over this eye, it tells you what you search for. Course numbers, course titles, course descriptions, section numbers, section titles, notes, or instructor name. Uh, if your district has a PD playlist and they've created those, they'll let you know you can search for those. So you can search for, let's do math. And this is just going to be a quick how-to. So we can get to navigating the other pages as well. So this brought up everything it thought was connected to math. And so I got three here. Um, over here, you can refine your settings. So you, I just let you all play with those when you get in the system. I'm going to come back here to show you the rest of this page before we show you how to start the course. Uh, you can search for courses that are aligned to standards. And you're only going to use the available button. So if you've got a goal that says, I'm a principal, I'm looking for a course for standard one, we can see if there's anything that's been tagged. Now, this is on the course builder to tag their courses. So we did come up with one. 
So here's one right here. I can click on it. It is a self-paced. All of our DPI courses are self-paced. And you're going to start the course. You can also read through any information that has been set on the course. And then down here, it's going to show you what competencies it's aligned to. Okay. I'm going back to professional development one more time. We also ask our course developers to tag their courses to focus areas. So maybe you need um, digital literacy, or maybe you need English language arts, or global education. You can click on there and see if we have any courses tagged to those. Um, that doesn't mean we don't have a course that meets those if you don't come up with any results. Um, we do have a list posted on our Google site of all the courses that are in here. And I'll try to, if we have time at the end, to show you where that is. And then I also list professional development news, and currently our Exceptional Children's Division has um, some new courses, ECATS courses, that a lot of people are taking. And so you can search for these course numbers and sign up for these courses right now. And going over one more tab is your My Courses. And again, you're going to see that same professional development news, but on the right, if your principal has recommended some training for you, if you're a teacher, it's going to show up here. Um, they may require you to take some PD, and that will show up here. Uh, up here where they're recommended, you can hide it by clicking on the I. Say, I don't want to see that anymore. I'm not going to take it. You can hide it off your list. Required training you cannot hide. Once you signed up for a course, um, it's going to show up here. And then here's your My Transcript button. So once you've earned some credit, you might want to go look at your transcript. Let me stop impersonating, and I'll show you how this looks. OK. All right, so here's how it would look if you signed up for some courses. If your district has PD playlists, they would be here. If you pin learning opportunities, so when you look for a course, watch for that pin. Maybe you're not sure you want to sign up for it, but it sounds interesting. You can pin that course, and it will show up in this list. And then there's my transcript. If you have a lot of items on your transcript, you can search by date range for what you want to see, maybe just this year. Um, you won't see these edit buttons. This is because I'm in as the, the state administrator of the system. It, you will see what office created the course here at DPI, um, the course number, the title of the course, and then the all important on the right-hand side is the credits that you've earned and your certificate for the course. Right there. So you'll get that. So that's how you access your certificate. Any questions about this page? Because I know this is very important to a lot of folks. The entries you see on my page that don't have the certificate, these were put in through Transfer Credit Manager. And that's next on our list. So if you're um, a teacher or support staff, you're only going to see this My Request page. And you can create a new credit request. We do have a help guide out there, so I'm not going to walk through that. Do not create a credit request unless you know your district has somebody that can approve a credit request. I have to set those because you could submit a request and there will be nobody in your district that knows to approve it. So find out from your district if they're using Transfer Credit Manager. Every district sees this, but not every district is using this. So find out from your district first. So this is where you can go to Virginia. They've approved for you to take the PD in Virginia. You bring your certificate back, you create a new credit request, you fill out the form and say, hey, I'd like to see this on my transcript in NISA. And then they would approve it, and it would show up over there as a credit. Okay. And then last thing that um, folks see is this mobile app. So if your district is using professional development, um, this is an app you can put on your device, your cell phone, your iPad, whatever. You can download it from the App Stores, Apple App Store or Google Play Store. And this allows teachers to take your attendance or you scan and scan yourself in as attended. 
And we do have that on the slide. All right. So, oh, this is real important. I'm just going to let you know as we scroll by this. Um, when you see your activity status is in your plans, gray is unstarted, blue is in progress, orange is incomplete or almost complete, and then green is complete. All right, I want to get to, and we'll come back to this in just a minute. So here's the transfer credit manager, and here's the mobile app that I wanted to show you. We'll come back and look at your evaluation a little bit deeper. So here's the um, app. It looks like this. It's called Performance Matters. So if your district is using PD, um, they can now um, assign it to also be able to take attendance through the mobile app. And this is very handy. Um, the districts that are using it love it. So they just scan a QR code. It scans you in as having attended the PLC or the teacher can send you the um, QR code for the course and let you let you scan yourself in. Okay. All right, and then the next tab over, uh, some folks will see PD playlist if your district has set those up. System administration is seen by site administrators and district administrators. So site administrators and district administrators you will not, you will see what's on the left. Uh, site administrators don't have as much as the district administrator, but this is where the district administrator has the right to create ad hoc reports. So if your district is needing a report and you, you are new here and they've given you this district administrator access, this is where you go to run your ad hoc report. And there's ad hoc report for anything you can think of up here, your assessments, People uh, reports, audit log reports, forces reports, evaluation reports, and observation reports. Okay. And then the next thing over is my staff. And this is also for the administrator. So this is where you go to find your school. Uh, if you have only one school, it will automatically be here, but you may need to select your school. And I won't scroll down and show all that. But you're going to see a list of your users here. Uh, you can set those teacher plan types and PDP plan types. You also have these first three links, and the evaluations links is a good place for you to go to see if people have started their plan. All right. The next tab over besides staff, this is your roster, is administration staff management where you're going to set those access rights. All right. And we do have a webinar that covers exactly how to do that, and there are help guides out there for how to do that. So I'd kind of like to go back um, if we have no questions about the tabs across the top of the page. Uh, the very last one we haven't covered yet is reporting. And this is for administrators as well, your site and district administrators. And we have uh, more in-depth uh, webinars for you guys. Uh, you're going to run quick reports out here. Anything that for summary evaluations are end of year, but maybe you want to know how many mentors have been assigned now. You can run that mentor relationship report now. Different, A lot of good reports out there for you to run. And also on this page um, are ad hoc reports that DPI has published or that your local um, district administrator has published for you to run. So this is for site administrators can run these or district administrators. If you run a report up here that you run a lot, some of them have where you can memorize them. And so you just click to memorize them and they will show up here so that you don't have to drill through every time to find them. I want to go back to the slide and talk about my evaluation. Right, we still have about 10 minutes left. I'm 
Okay. Kim, before I get into that, do we have any questions? No, none at this time. Okay. Thank you, Kim. So this is the My Evaluation page that we've looked at. Here's your progress icons that you're going to go through in the plan. Here is what happens at the beginning of the year. Your training and orientation needs to be completed. In your PDP, you need to complete that self-assessment. And your choice to share it with anybody. Uh, you're not required to share your self-assessment. And then your help guides for those very beginning steps. There's the letter I in the circle that I showed you a while ago. If you see asterisk, <coughs> excuse me, those steps means they're required. You have to complete those. And we also talked about that little email icon. You'll see that throughout your plan. And then these little flowers will tell you what progress step you're in. So the educator evaluation is all about growth and improving. Uh, your, this intended purpose of your evaluation a process is to assess your teacher's performance in relation to the North Carolina professional teaching standards and design a plan for your professional growth. So this comprises you have three observations to get some formative feedback, one, two, three, if you're on standard or comprehensive. If you're on abbreviated, you're going to have two. Uh, and then at the end of the year, you get that summative evaluation where you get your ratings. Here, you're getting observation formative feedback. I did want to show you this because when you do go in your rubric, we have some new words out there. Um, as you know, if you've been in a rubric before, you have your ratings of developing, proficient, accomplished, distinguished. Uh, during the year, while you're having your observation, we want you more to look at what do you know? Do you have the knowledge? What do you show? Do you have action? Um, what happens within the classroom with your students? Is there interaction? And then how do you take it outside of the classroom? What is the extension? And Kim, if you need to explain that any further, I'll be glad for you to. All right, so no one observation should fully inform the teacher rating. Um, the observation conversations should not be surrounding the rating descriptor. It should be surrounding these descriptors, the observation descriptors. Uh, thanks, Cammie. And just another reminder is when we're marking our rubrics um, the appropriate way that we read each descriptor and mark the descriptor or we do not mark the descriptor during an observation, we don't have to progress across the rubric. Um, that's just a reminder. Hopefully, we're we're not experiencing that um, <laughs> complication anymore. But just remember that you read each descriptor, you mark it, or you do not. And then at the end, for the summit of evaluation, we look at a progression to then determine a rating. So just a reminder. Yeah. And we do have a we do have a uh, question, Cami. It says okay. I wanted to. I wanted to verify if under current evaluations, it says nothing found, the list is empty, that we need to wait for our administrator before we set the orientation and files being shared right now. Yes, because your administrator needs to set your plan type and it must process overnight before you see it. So that's why you're seeing nothing found yet. Your administrator, your principal, somebody needs to set that plan type. Okay and these process overnight. All right, and then real quick before we move on, we've only got a couple minutes. Um, these little light bulbs, I don't know if you can see them real good, besides standard one and element 1A, go out there and click on them. They're gonna give you courses that are aligned to the standard and this element. Um, so if you have set a goal that under element 1A to meet something under element 1A, click the light bulb there and you can find courses that way as well. All right, so we did all that. I'm going to move on because we've gone over all of this. Get the transfer credit manager, the mobile app, 
And guys, you have a couple minutes to get another question in if you want. Uh, there's the administration staff management signing access rights to plans. There's the quick reports. Here's our Google site. Um, it's bit.ly.nesis-support. And here's where you can find orientation information. Uh, if you're a teacher, you can click here and get your manual and any additional resources. Support staff, you're listed here. Um, your um, evaluation is in NESIS if it doesn't have an asterisk in front of it. So if, if you see an asterisk here, if you're an occupational therapist, your observation is not in NESIS. It is done outside of NESIS. We also have webinars listed out here. So upcoming next week will be the beginning, beginning of year for teachers right here next Tuesday. And then we also have um, some additional links you can click on. We have the online tools, resources. This is where that list is of all the courses in that link right below there, NISA's Professional Development, all the courses that we currently have published in the catalog. You can come out here, find one you want to take, go back in NISA's and sign up for it. And also out here is a list of who um, at DPI uh, and managing the NISA system. All the help guides are out here as well. And then we also post the recordings on the webinar page in here. So just come out here and there's a lot of good information. Kim has done a wonderful job setting up this site for you. And it is just about five o'clock. So let me get back to the slides. I do want you to please, we're going to click, click the rest of the slides. It's about the webinars that are coming up. I want to get you the feedback link. There's our contact information. You're welcome to email Kim and I anytime. The support desk is for your designated person at your site to open tickets. And there's our feedback survey link. But please do fill this out. We read all of these you answer. And by filling it out, when you complete it, it will send you that certificate of completion. And then watch for an email from me about 24 to 48 hours after the webinar. And we'll send you any questions that we've not answered and also include this feedback link as well. So I do, I do want to thank you for attending today. Um, we had a little bit of a slow start with the sound. So we do thank you for uh, being patient with the beginning of that. And I hope you did learn a little bit about navigating through NISIS today. Um, I'm available at any time if you want to get on a call. Uh, just let me know, email me, and we'll walk through some, any questions you have as well. So there's our um, email addresses and the webinar link again. So Kim, do we have any other questions before we sign off? No, no more, no other questions. Okay. Well, thank you all. Welcome to NISIS. Welcome new users. We appreciate you joining us today. And um, you guys go have a great evening.